someone who's fraudulent, someone who's fake, someone who is either intentionally deceiving or even unintentionally deceiving people are going to distort what the word prophecy means. The truth is anyone can prophesy because to prophesy means to simply give a revelation. But the issue is what sort of prophecy or what sort of prophet? Because you simply add an adjective to determine what sort of prophet the person is. Are they a false prophet? Are they a lying prophet? Are they a prophet of Baal, Baal's prophet? Or are they a prophet of God? Prophet of God, if a person wants to bring about a true revelation of God, it's going to line up with the scriptures. And in most cases for us, that is prophecy, his word. Now, I'm not often on Twitter or X, whatever the name of it is, but I happen to come across an interesting dialogue with Justin Peters. He makes a statement and it's spot on. It is so true. And obviously it's going to cause folks to be upset. And I want to look at what he stated and then look at the kind of the, the defense that people have towards the, and he's calling on false prophets. If this is not you, then you shouldn't be bothered. But what's the old saying? If you throw a rock in the crowd, the one who screams is the one who got hit. And apparently this bothers a lot of people. Why? I don't know, because he didn't say anything that was not right. So let's look at, at his at his Twitter post and notice what it says. Let me back this up just a little bit. Uh, he says, yes, I'm praying for Israel, but this is a new this new war brings up serious theological questions for charismatics. Uh, this is yet another in a long, 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 and he could add probably five more longs to that list of globally impactful events in just the last few years that none of the charismatic prophets saw coming. I guess you would also throw in there uh, any sort of recession. You would also throw in there uh, COVID, obviously, the cure for COVID. If there was a cure for COVID, no one had any 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 inkling of this happening. Uh, any other catastrophes, uh, global events such as either hurricanes or anything like that. There's never those that come about. But why should that bother us? Because who cares if uh, a prophet is supposed to know these things or to call these things? Who cares? Because the only point of having a, a prophecy is to tell me that I'm going to have money, that I'm going to be rich. Who cares about bad things happening in the world, right? I don't need a prophet to warn me of that. Who cares? Just prophesy that I'm going to have good things in life. I'm going to have a money and I'm going to have a car and I'm going to have nothing but success. That's what I want to hear, right? And so he says, uh, he says, why didn't they? Which is a good question. Why didn't they? Uh, all these prophets claim to hear from God regularly. God tells them where to eat and where to talk to. He tells the people in their audience uh, they should give them money. He gives them words of knowledge. And he's correct. All of these things that, that Justin is saying, this is what prophets, how they come off. That God, they're in constant co communication with them. And that they tell them all these different things because that's what it's like to be in tune, to be one, to flow in the spirit. And when something is important that's about to happen or did, does happen, they're never Johnny on the spot. They never get an accurate prophecy. And he goes on to say, why didn't he bother to tell any of these prophets that Hamas was going to launch a deadly attack on Israel and murder scores of innocent men, women, and children today? Now, this is Israel. Israel does play an important part in God's plan. And so you would think that they would have had the heads up on that. But no, they're too worried about getting prophecies to reveal about who's getting a new Cadillac, who's getting a new uh, Mercedes, whose bank account is going to be enlarged who's going to be blessed immensely. That's what they're more concerned about, not, not these trivial matters. And so I want to, I want to move down a little further and uh, let's see. There are these, yeah, let me move down a little bit further because I want, I want to look at some of the, some of the responses because someone says this guy, Dr. Malachi, uh, I don't know what his name is, <laughs> But he knows of several prophetic people who spoke about this. And he goes on to say that they spoke about something happening on the 5th or the 10th. Well, first of all, uh, in Israel, many of them may have been celebrating the Day of Atonement. So that's not really going out on a limb. It's almost like saying that come November, the second Tuesday, I'm sorry, the first Tuesday of November in America every four years, I just believe there's going to be a political upheaval. There's going to be something major happening in Washington, D.C. Well, that's not a prophecy. That's just really knowing what time it is. But he would have he should have known this again. Prophecy in the Bible is specific. Prophecy in the Bible is intended to glorify God. Prophecy in the, in the Bible is intended to bring about uh, a growth of the body. That's what prophecy is. It's, it's not vague. It's specific. And it can be measured and it can be verified. But this person says people did. Justin's response is, no, they did not. 
He says, no, they didn't. I do not believe it. Please show proof of a prophetic person prophesying this specifically for the date. And they cannot. And that's the point. When you ask for proof, you're not going to get any proof. Yeah, what you're going to get is you're going to get someone calling you a liar, that you don't love the Lord, all those sorts of things. That's what you're going to get. As a matter of fact, let's see. Someone says you someone calls Dustin. I mean, Justin, uh, a clown. Why? Why is he a clown for asking us to trust that you are a prophet or that there are these these false prophets? Why is it? A, why is he a clown for calling out false prophets? So was Jesus one when he says, uh, beware of false prophets and they'll arise trying to deceive even the very elect? What we say that about him, all Justin is doing, especially in this case, is simply what we're told to do. We are commanded to expose this stuff. We are commanded to contend for the faith. What Justin is doing, there's nothing wrong with that. And so he says, uh, I'm not the one making claims. I'm simply asking for proof. Why can't we ask for proof? If you're going to say that, that yes, someone did prophesy, well, then who? That person should be found out and should be lauded. That's a person that we need to be listening to. If you have heard that this is going to happen and no one listened to you, well, then, first of all, what sort of prophet are you? Where you what, what do you prophesy in secret? Uh, you prophesy to the people that it's germane to. If God has something in the Bible, when we look at it, when God gives a prophecy about what's going to happen, the people involved knew about the prophecy, at, le at least on one side or the other. And so in this case, no one knew. We don't. Was he prophesying to just a couple people in his room? We need to know because that's what prophecy is. He says, so I'm not I'm not the one making claims. I'm simply asking for proof. Uh, someone says, no, they no, they didn't is a claim. So I guess this person wants to wants to go along with, you know, that Justin is wrong. He says, I follow these charlatans pretty closely. I've learned none of them prophesying this way. I'm with any specificity. I stand with what I with what I claim. And I stand with you too, Justin. What you just said is true. They do not have any sort of uh, way to back this up. He says, we were fasting. This guy comes back and says, we were fasting during Isaiah 62, 6 fast. Several leaders, so, an Isaiah 62, 6 fast. Okay. Several leaders simply were stating things were going to, uh, to escalate in Israel. That's like stating it's it's October. Uh, the temperature is probably going to start dropping. I feel in the spirit the Lord is going to start causing the temperatures on the earth to cool down. So the temperature, so so things are going to escalate in Israel. Okay. Now, by the way, we don't even know if that was said, and even more so because of the prophetic end times timeline. What timeline? So you have a calendar of what's going anyway. Also, we had a leader come to our church to show uh, and said in a dream that in January, he said this in, uh, apparently in January. Well, I won't read more of what he says because it, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't say anything at all. And so let's see what Justin's reply is. Justin says, these prophets regularly prophesy that things will escalate in Israel. I've seen them say that for years and they do. There's always, as a matter of fact, uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum. Then we've got Benny Hinn who comes out and he gives a prophecy that states that uh, there's going to be peace coming soon in Israel. Now, this was about a week or two uh, before that. As a matter of fact, I happened to catch it after the fact from uh, the messed up church who they also do a good job of exposing some of these <laughs> these charlatans and to kind of compare what, what uh, Benny Hinn is saying versus what's actually happening on the ground. So, so they, and they always make these statements. This person says uh, that they have prophesy, prophecy saying that things will escalate in Taiwan. This person says, let's pray for it. Well, fine, let's pray for Israel. But what we're saying is, why not, why not, why not simply call the charlatans out? What is it that makes you so beholden to false prophets rather than the true word of God? Someone says, brother, I don't disagree that there are many fake, out, fake prophets out there. Uh, but is it a good idea to publicly despise prophecy? He's not despising prophecy. That's the point. Do not despise prophecy, but don't equate everything with prophecy. Don't equate a lie with a prophecy because someone puts God's name on it. That person has not spoken of the Lord. What does Peter says? He says, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be also false prophets among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even not all, but even some will deny the master who bought them, uh, bring swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, 
and their destruction is not asleep. They are going to they are going to exploit you. Uh, oftentimes, at the end of these prophecies, some sort of way there's going to be an offering, especially the person who's known to call himself a prophet. They are going to bring in destructive heresies. Well, anyone that takes you from the authentic, true word of God and wants to supplant that with your focus on that, with your focus on them. That's someone who is to be avoided, to be marked. And so it's true. Why don't these prophets, like Justin is saying, why don't these prophets let us know? Why don't you why don't you declare it? There is Facebook, there is Twitter, there is YouTube, there's every other social media platform. You can have a website, and then you can give us these prophecies in advance. Prophecy should be in advance. We shouldn't hear from this person that uh, yeah, someone did prophesy about this oh some time ago. But you don't recall this until someone else puts you guys your feet to the fire. And even the prophecy that the guy admits to or alleges to, even that is vague. Something's going to escalate uh, in, in Israel, maybe the fifth, maybe the tenth. Do we see a prophet like that in the Bible where they give these vague prophecies? Why can't we just call stuff out? If you people who believe in these prophecies today, uh, why don't you do yourself a favor? Why don't you call out the people. Why don't you deal with the people in your own camp, so to speak? They're not really in your camp, or maybe they are. If they're in your camp, that means you're on the wrong team. They're not in my camp. As a matter of fact, like Paul says, that it's our aim to undermine their ministry, to let people know that they're not of us. And they are not. Because the God that we serve is precise. He's accurate. He doesn't have to throw any vague prophecies. As a matter of fact, most of the prophecies that he would want to give us, he's already given us. If there are some to come, fine. Let them be tested test them. As, as John says, not every spirit comes from God. And so test it. How? By the word. Two, if it comes to pass, then you know what? We might need to start listening to these people. But so far, with all of these social media platforms, with these phones and so forth, no one, no one's out there recording these things. And another reason, so anyone that calls himself a prophet and they aren't giving these prophecies that are germane to us, our survival, uh, anything that's leading people to God, you need to mark and avoid every last one of them. I think Justin is right on time and shame on anyone else that would come against what he's saying as though that he's wrong and the false prophets are right. Why in the world would you want to defend the false prophet or the false prophecy for the sake of, for the sake of unity? Why would we want to be unified with someone who's bringing about a false prophecy, heresy? Why would we want to bring about unity with someone who is maligning the name of Christ, who's distorting the name of Christ, who is sullying uh, this ministry? Why? What fellowship does light have with darkness? None. And so if you're going to defend them, fine, do it at your own peril. I can promise you that God will also deal with you as well. If you are not found supporting his word, if you are if you are found to be one that's opposing him, if you are opposing his message, and I mean the message of the gospel, the true message of the gospel, then as Paul says about Alexander, then beware of him. God will deal with him and he will deal with you as well.